Hello and welcome back to Gen Chem with Dr. J. I'm Dr. Janita Pritchett and on this channel we talk about all things Gen Chem related. On this video I'm going to be showing how you can combine gas law problems with stoichiometry. Let's get started. Now, as we've seen in previous videos, there are situations in which we could have a chemical reaction that can produce a gas. And as such, because we have that chemical reaction and we know those stoichiometric relationships exist, we can use those ratios between the moles of the molecules or compounds that are present to help predict and find information about other um, portions of the problem. And so much like before, we can use that mole bridge idea as a means to be able to solve for uh, something that we're looking at in a reaction and just now incorporating the fact that PB equals NRT or our ideal gas law is a new way to solve for moles. And so as you've seen before, when we've had our, our, our mole bridge, you can use PB equals NRT as a means to get to and from your moles. So this is just an adding on to the idea of using mole island to do so, and that molarity formula that we discussed in chapter four. And so you now have all the options in the world when you're approaching these um, stoichiometry based problems. But this mole bridge idea, where we use the coefficients to help us out to go from one thing to the other, will be a vital learning tool that you can use. And so remember, when you're at STP, you could also use the fact that the molar volume of a gas would be one mole is equal to 22.4 liters. Okay, so let's look at a problem here. It says what volume of H2 is needed to make 35.7 grams of methanol at 738 millimeters of mercury and 355 Kelvin. So we're looking for the volume of helium hydrogen, excuse me, that's needed to make 35.7 grams of the methanol. And we're given some other information about the pressure being at 738 and the temperature at 355. And so we automatically know that we won't be able to use that molar volume relationship off the bat, that 22.4, because we're not at STP. And so we're going to just attack this using our basic stoichiometry method, get to moles in whatever manner we can, use mole to mole to go from one substance to the other, and then use one of our options to get the information that we're looking for. So if we're starting with 35.7 grams of methanol, we know our first step, like any other stoichiometry problem, is to get to moles first. And so if we have 12.01 plus the mass of hydrogen times 4 plus oxygen, which is 16, that gives us a mass of 32.05 grams and one mole. Then whenever we want to go from talking about methanol to hydrogen, we now can use that mole to mole ratio. So one mole of, of, of the methanol, excuse me, is equal to two moles of our hydrogen. And we can stop there and get our mole amount. So we would take 35.7 times 2 divided by 32.05, and that gets us 2.23 moles of hydrogen. Now, if we were at STP in this problem, we could take this one more step and use that molar volume uh, conversion. However, since we're not at STP, we're going to want to use the ideal gas law in this case to help us to get to volume. Why do we want to use the ideal gas law? Well, look at what we know. We have now our moles and we have a temperature and a pressure provided in the problem. And so we could use PV equals NRT to solve for that volume. So our volume would end up being NRT over P but remember that we have to be in certain units. So our pressure we would need to convert from millimeters of mercury to atmosphere, so one atmosphere here. And so we could take 738 divided by 760 
and that would give us 0 0.971 as our atmospheres. And that's what we'll plug in. And so for our mole amount, we would put 2.23 moles. Our R is that constant, 0 0.08206 liters times atmospheres divided by moles Kelvin. And then our temperature is 355 Kelvin. And we would divide all of that by our pressure, which we've just converted of the 0 0.971 atmospheres. Okay, so now plug all that in. We got 2.23 times 0 0.08206 times 355 divided by 0 0.971. And that would give us a total volume of 66.9 liters. And then one more example. It says what volume of oxygen at 0 0.750 atmospheres and 313 Kelvin is generated by the thermolysis of 10 grams of mercury two oxide. And so if we look at this here, again, we're looking for volume, very similar to the previous problem. Um, we know we have 10 grams of this and we gotta go from here to here. So that should help you think about your steps. So we would take our 10 grams of the mercury oxide, mercury two oxide. First step, get to moles. And so if we look at mercury, mercury is 200.59 and we add in oxygen, that would give us 216.59 grams is to one mole of the oxide. We then would convert from mole to mole. So we would say two moles of the mercury oxide is to one mole of oxygen. Again, if we were at STP, we could keep going and use that molar volume. But since we're not, we're gonna stop here, get our moles. So 10 divided by 216.59 divided by two, and that gets us point 0231 moles of oxygen. And so then if we want to find the volume, we're again going to use that PV equals NRT equation, solve for the volume. So volume would equal NRT over P. And so when we plug that in, we would have the mole amount, which we've just calculated, 0.2 0 0.02, excuse me, 31 moles times the R value liters times atmosphere divided by moles times Kelvin and times the temperature of 313 Kelvin divide all of that by our pressure of 0 0.750 atmospheres. And when we plug that all in, 0 0.0231 times 0 0.08206 times 313 divided by 0 0.75, and that would get us a volume of 0 0.791 liters. I hope this information helped you to understand how to go about solving these reactions that can produce gas and incorporating stoichiometry and our ideal gas laws in the same problem. Be sure to get like, comment, and subscribe, and let me know what other content you want to see in future videos. Have a great day, and I'll see you guys in future ones. Bye.